morning and welcome to Smith Chapel AME Church. My name is Pastor Kay and we are so excited to have you worshiping with us today. You are welcome to clap your hands, to stump your feet, to give the Lord a wave offering. And you are invited to join us in the chat box with an amen, a yes, that was good, preacher. You can put a heart, you can put praise hands. Let us know that you're worshiping with us today. And in fact, if you're ready to worship, go ahead and drop in the chat box right now, amen, letting us know that you're ready to praise and worship the Lord together. So come on, let's worship. Let's worship God together. Oh, yeah, this morning. <laughs> Anybody standing in the need of a blessing? Ah, oh, yeah, I am. I love blessings. And I love to bless him, too. <laughs> Every time I turn around, he makes a way out of no way. Over and over again, he's blessing me. Come on, ladies. He's blessing me. Yeah. He's blessing me. Over and over. Over and over again. Every time I turn around. Every time I turn around, he's making a way somehow. Over and over. Over and over again. He's blessing me. Come on, let's do it again, girls. He's blessing me. He's blessing me. Over and over. Over and over again. Oh yeah, he's blessing me. He's blessing me. And you two right here where you right stand. Here where I stand. Every time you what? Every time I turn around, he's making a way somehow. Over and over. over He's in my walk. Yes. He, oh, yes, the Lord. Oh, yes, the Lord is blessing me. He's in my talk. He's in. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, the Lord is blessing me. Listen. I looked at my hand. My hand looked new. I looked at my feet and they did over. Let's go to the top of it again. He's blessing me. He's blessing me. Over and over. over, and over again. Put your hands together. He's blessing. He's blessing me. Right here where I stand. Right here where I stand. Every time. Every time I turn around, He's making a way somehow. Over and over. over, and over again. He's blessing me. Oh yeah, he's in my walk. He's in oh my yes, walk. come on. Oh, oh yes. The Lord's blessing me. He's in my talk. He's in my talk. Yeah. Oh, yes, the Lord is blessing. Look at y'all. I looked at my hand, my hand looked new. I looked at my feet and they did too. Oh, over again. He's blessing me. Yeah. He's blessing me. He's blessing me. Over. Over and over again. He's blessing me. He's blessing me. Right here. Right here where I stand. Every time. Every time I turn around, he's making a way somehow. Over and over. Over and over. Over and over again. Over and over again. Over and over again. Over and over again. It keeps happening over again. I don't know how to act when it happens. But I tell you, I'm grateful. Over and over again. O V E R over. O V E R over. Over and over and over and over. 
over and over again. Come on out, y'all. Over and over again. He's blessing me. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you this morning and we say thank you. Lord, we thank you in advance. We thank you ahead of. We thank you even though it hasn't happened yet. We thank you though it hasn't manifested. We praise you today with a yet praise. We praise you today because of who you are. We praise you because we know there's nothing too hard for you. There's nothing too difficult for you. We praise you because there is no failure in you. We praise you because you are able. Come on and say it with me today. God is able. Able to do abundantly. Above all that we can ask or think. And so, God, today we come to just praise you. We praise you for how you've made a way out of no way. We praise you for how you've opened doors. We praise you for how you've healed our bodies. We praise you for how you've protected our loved ones. We praise you for how you've kept us safe through this pandemic. We praise you because you paid our bills. We praise you because you put food on the table. We praise you because you've given us jobs that we weren't qualified for. We praise you today because you're worthy. We praise you today because you're faithful. We praise you today because you're God. We praise you today because of who you are. We praise you today because you deserve it. Come on and praise the Lord. Come on and bless the Lord. Come on and call his name today. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, today, we enter into this worship experience to magnify your name, to glorify your name. Today, Lord, we praise you because we heard that when praises go up, <laughs> blessings come down. We praise you because your word says that you inhabit, you live off of the praises of your people. We praise you because nobody else can praise you for us. We praise you because we don't want any rocks crying out. We praise you because you've just been that good. We praise you today, God. We honor you today, God. We thank you for the privilege of coming into your presence with praise. And so, Lord, today we've got a praise on our lips. We've got a praise in our hearts. I've, I've got a praise. <laughs> I've got a praise. <laughs> I got a praise and I got to get it out. <laughs> I got a praise. And so we just praise you. We magnify you today. And God, after we're done praising you, we're going to go and tell somebody about your goodness. And so touch us in this worship experience today oh God that when we leave this place we will be changed it's in the strong mighty name of Jesus <laughs> Jesus 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 the Christ we pray and the people of God praise you with an amen hallelujah 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 God we offer you the highest praise we praise you God we praise you God we praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Our scripture reading this morning can be found in the book of Habakkuk, the second chapter. That's Habakkuk 2, and we'll read together verses 1 through 3. Hear the word of the Lord. I will stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts, I will look and see 
what God will say to me and what answer I am to give to this complaint. Verse 2, then the Lord replied, write down the vision and make it plain on tablets so that they who read it may run with it. For the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks to the end and it will not prove false, though it linger. That thing you've been praying for, that vision, that business plan, that financial breakthrough, that healing in your body, that change. Though it linger, the word of God says, wait for it. Somebody say, wait for it. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and it will not delay. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. For the Bible tells me so. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. How do I know it? Because the Bible tells me so. Good morning, young people. You know what time it is. It's time for our children's message. And I'm so excited to spend a little bit of time with you today. Now, I brought some goodies with me today. Let's see what I got. Anybody like cookies? Woo! I like cookies. Chips Ahoy, I got to tell you. I like cookies. But my husband, Mr. D, he loves cookies. Anybody like fruit snacks? Oh, these are good, too. Mixed fruit. We got some strawberry, some blueberry, some apple. Mmm, good, good. Anybody like peanut butter? Yeah, we got some peanut butter crackers. And we got some suckers up here today. Yeah. Now... What if I told you that all of this candy was yours, but not yet? Not yet. If I say you can have all of this candy, but you're going to have to wait, it's yours, but not yet. Patience is one of the fruits of the Spirit. Patience is something that God wants us to learn so that we can love God, obey God, and follow God's commandments. But patience is often an area that we struggle in. There's been this challenge that's been happening, and some of you may have seen it, because I know you. some of you are on TikTok, Instagram, look at YouTube with your parents. And there's been this challenge where parents have put candy in front of their kids and said, all right, you can have this, but you got to wait just a few minutes until I come back. Now, I've got a question for you today, young people. If your parents put candy in front of you and went and took a phone call, put some laundry in the washing machine, did dishes, and say, you can have this candy, but not until I come back, how many of you would make it? Because it's your candy. You just have to be patient and wait for the time. You're going to hear today in our sermon about the power of yet. See, sometimes when people hear not yet, they take it as something negative. That they become frustrated and impatient because they think it's not going to happen. But yet is actually a powerful word. It means it is going to happen at the right time, at the appointed time, at the designated time. And something that we have to learn if we are going to be ambassadors for Jesus Christ, if we're going to share the good news of Jesus Christ with others, is patience and waiting for yet. See, we can practice it. Here's some ways that we can practice it. When our parents say, you know what? 
you can have that candy after dinner. Instead of getting frustrated, you can go, all right, let me practice. It's mine, but not yet. Your parents say you can play that video game, but not until you clean your room. There's no need to stop. You're going to get to play, but not yet. Yet means it's yours. It's waiting for you. It's coming. It's going to happen, but we have to show patience. Patience. So what do I do, Pastor Kay, when I'm impatient and it's difficult to wait? Pray. Pray. In that moment when you're frustrated and you're angry, stop and say, Lord, help me to wait. Help me to be patient, respectful, and kind until it's time, until it's my turn. So, the candy, the video game, the playing outside, the watching the movie, the staying up late, it's yours, but not yet. But God comes and helps us in those moments when we pray and gives us the strength to wait until it's our time. Here's the other thing that we do when we become impatient, we've got to remind ourselves that God is a promise keeper. See, when God tells us, I've got a blessing for you, but not yet, God is not playing with us. God is not playing some joke or trick. No. When God makes a promise to us, God always keeps God's word. So we pray and remind ourselves that God is a promise keeper until our yet comes, okay? So as you go into this next week, There's going to be some things that you're ready for right now. It's yours, but not yet. So don't get frustrated, but ask God to give you the strength until that time comes. You guys think you can do that? I know you can. I know you can. And what we're going to do is pray so that God can help you while you wait to get through that time, the in-between, until the yet. Let's pray. God, we thank you that you have blessings for us, blessings that you give us through our parents and our grandparents and our teachers. Lord, there's things that you have for us, but we have to demonstrate patience, self-control, kindness, not get an attitude or frustrated when it hasn't happened yet. Help us to remember, God, that you desire to bless us and do great things for us. And when it's difficult and we feel like we can't do it, you'll come and give us the strength to wait. And so I thank you, Lord, that there are some amazing days ahead of our young people. There's beautiful sunshine days that they're gonna get to play with their friends. They're gonna get to go outside. There's days after this pandemic that we'll get all back together and be able to come to church. It just hasn't happened yet. But we trust you, God, and know that just because it hasn't happened yet doesn't mean that it won't happen at all. So God, help us to trust you to patiently wait and believe that every promise you made to us will come to pass. This we pray in Jesus' name. And the people of God said, amen, amen, amen. All right, be patient this week. And when you struggle, ask God to help you because it's yours, even though it hasn't happened yet. I'll see you next week. It's time that we would continue to worship God in our giving Worship is giving. It's simply saying, Lord, I honor you. I trust you. I reverence you with my money. And so we have a few ways that you can give here at Smith Chapel. You can give electronically via PayPal or Gillify, or you can mail your offering into the church. There's a giving screen that's coming up right now. And you'll also see a QR code there. So you could hover your phone over it and it'll take you directly to our Givelify page. Here's what I want you to do, though. I want you to take your offering and I want you to lift it up before the Lord as a, as a love offering, as a thanksgiving and saying, thank you, Lord. And I'm giving back to you with a cheerful heart. And I want you to join in with this prayer that we pray here at Smith Chapel. Go ahead and pray it with me. Lord, help me to grasp that all the money I think I have is really yours. Help me to grasp that all the money the church has is not the church's, but it's yours, God. Give us healthy, giving hearts to do your will and build your kingdom 
This we pray in Jesus' name. And the word of God says this, give and I'll give it back to you. Press down, shaken together, running over, back in good measure will the Lord give it back to you. I am so excited to introduce our preacher for today. A little over a year ago, God blessed me with a friendship of Minister Andrell Williams. Now you may have heard that name before, or you may not have, but you've certainly seen his work. He is a talented, anointed, gifted, graphic designer and video content creator. If you've noticed the beautiful graphics and the upgrade and our virtual worship experience over these last several months, nearly the last year, it's been because of this gifted man. But he's also a preacher, a preacher of the gospel, one convicted and rooted in the word of God. He also is a person that has a sweet, sweet, sweet spirit. <laughs> Pastor Kay calls him morning, noon, and night, and he always answers. He's always willing to help and do everything that he can to allow our service to be the best. He is the associate pastor at Beth Eden Baptist Church. He's a teacher. He's a father. And he's just soon became a fiance and soon to be a husband to Sister Ashley. But today, he's God's appointed messenger. And so you know how we do here at Smith Chapel. We give our preacher preaching orders. And so if you just stretch your hands out to the man of God and you would begin to pray for him, if you pray for him, I know God will use him. If you pray for him, God will open up your heart to receive the word that God has. So come on and say it with me. Preach, preacher, preach. Come on, bro. Preach the word of God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hold back. Hold back. The light. Give me strength. Give me strength. To fight. To fight. I'll do your will. I'll do your will. If you just say to my soul. Peace be still. Oh Lord, I love your name. Yes, I do. Lord, I love your name. And every day, every day it's just the same. Just the same. Come on, open up, y'all. I'll be all right. I'll be all right. If you hold back. Let's say it again one more time. Girls, hold back. Hold back. The night. The night. We need a little strength sometimes. Give me strength. The worst things happen at midnight. And fight. <laughs> but I'm going to still do your will I no matter what comes my way. Your will. If you just say. Be sealed. Peace be sealed. Oh Lord, I love your name. Every day. I'll be all right. If you hold back. The storm is raging all around. Satan, mean old 
Satan is trying to pull me down. But Lord, I know, know that you told me in your word if I would abide just stretch forth your mighty, 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 mighty hand and just hold back the night. Everybody sing hold back the night. All I need is a little strength right now. I want to make the enemy mad. I promise you I'll do your will. Whatever you want me to do, Lord. If you say to my soul, I need a little peace be still. Oh, Lord. How I love, how I love your name. Every day. You're just the same. I'll be all right. Say it again, say it again, say it again. I'll be. If you just hold my hand, I'll be. All right. One more time, one more time, I'll be all right. If you if you just pull back the To our pastor, to officers, to all of you of God's people, I certainly count an honor and a privilege to stand for you again this morning. There is a word from the Lord, and it is preaching time. I'm going to give you the scripture, and then we'll pray, and then we're going to read the word, and we're going to let the Lord have his way. Amen. Our scripture reading comes from 2 Chronicles, the 15th chapter, verses 6 through 8. That's again, 2 Chronicles, the 15th chapter, verses 6 through 8. Let us pray. God, we say thank you for this another day that you have given us. God, have your way today. God, use your men's sermon as you see fit. God, I'm available to you. God, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable. That's like God, move me aside. God, let Allow your anointing to flow. God, take all glory into thyself. God, I pray that this word encourage and strengthen somebody. God, that they will want to run on and see what the end is going to be. I thank you. I give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Second Chronicles, the 15th chapter, verses 6 to 8, simply reads, They were broken in pieces, nations against nations, and city against city. For God troubled them with every sort of distress. But you take courage. Do not let your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. When Asa heard these words, the prophecy of Azariah, son of Oded, he took courage and put away the idols from all the land of Judea and Benjamin and from the towns that he had taken in all the hill country. He repaired the altar of the Lord that was in front of the vestibule of the house of the Lord. This morning, I want to preach from the subject bold attributes this morning i want to preach from the subject bold attributes we are still uh, in the sermon series of be bold over the last a couple week pastor has been preaching and teaching on how we need to be bold last week he told us that we should be bold because we have god's backing um i don't know about you but that word blessed me uh it blessed me throughout last week and we don't learn have to have to learn how to be bold knowing that we got god's got backing 
Uh, it is the third Sunday of 2021. Normally, uh, in the beginning of the year, we hear all of these New Year's resolutions. People are working on vision boards and planning out the year uh, what their goals are uh, and what they plan to do this year. Uh, interesting enough, this year, uh, I haven't seen it on my Facebook, on social media. I don't know if it's because we crossed over into another year, but it seems as though we're stuck in the same place. And, uh, let me pause it. Have you ever felt like you've been stuck uh, before in the same place? Seem like you can't go back? Uh, seem like you can't move forward? And it feels like you are stagnant. Mm -hmm. This ain't my first point, but even when you are, uh, uh, even when you are stagnant even when you are in the same place although you feel stuck you still gotta stick and move in the comments can you just write that stick and move yeah you missed it you might be stuck in the same place but wherever you are you can still make a difference right there wherever you are God can still work a miracle right there wherever you are God can still do something supernatural right where you are God can make a way out of nowhere type in the comments right where I am. I don't care where you are, what it looks like right where you are. God can do something for you. Uh, stop looking at where you are and thank God for where he's brought you from. You didn't hear what I just said. I said stop looking at where you are right now. Yeah, America is so messed up. Yeah, we're going through a lot but I'm so glad. I ain't back in slavery no more. So I thank God. I ain't where I want to be. I'm stuck where I am but I'm so glad. Reverend Rose, even where I am the good thing about it is God is right here with me I may not be where I want to be I may not be where I feel should I be but thank God I ain't where I once was hear me uh, you got to change the perspective of your position uh, and hear me and then when you change your posture uh, in his presence let me say it again I say you got to change your perspective uh, of your position uh, and then when you realize uh, that you are in the presence uh, of the almighty God uh, you're going to have to change your posture uh, I can really close right here uh, many times we can't experience the goodness of the place we're in uh, uh, because we focus on the problems and position we might might be in. Uh, but I believe the word of the Lord uh, that all things uh, will work together for the good of those uh, who were called according to his purpose. Uh, can I ask you this morning, uh, what is your purpose? Uh, and, and can I ask you what you're really called? Got to move. Uh, the problem is uh, people are searching for stimulus money uh, and looking for free money and benefits, uh, but they haven't seeked out God, uh, not for what he can do, uh, but for who he is. Uh, there are some things uh, money just came by. Uh, it came by your peace. Uh, it, it came by your joy. Uh, it came by your salvation, but I know something uh, that has all of that. Uh, it doesn't cost a thing. Uh, it's the very presence of God, uh, and when you come into the presence of God, uh, you want to change your posture. Uh, scripture it says let us worship him uh, and worship him in spirit and in truth a uh, reason why you are stuck in the same place and same position uh, and it hasn't changed because your posture towards God hasn't changed uh, uh, your posture is uh, your hand is out uh, when it should be your hand is up uh, uh, God I worship you uh, because you've kept me uh, God I worship you because you've been so good to me uh, God I worship you because you've been a friend uh, when I've been lonely uh, because you kept my mind uh, you protected my from change your posture. We are in a place where America, uh, the church, our judicial system needs to be rebuilt. Uh, people's systems have been broken and it will take boldness to rebuild it. You heard what I just said? I said it will take boldness to rebuild it. Our text this morning in Second Chronicles talks about King Azar. Uh, in his reign, he was a faithful king, uh, and he did what was good and right in the sight of God. Uh, he was visited by a prophet named Azariah. Uh, Azariah instructed him and people of Judea uh, to keep seeking after God. Uh, I know in this quarantine, uh, you've been at home, uh, but I wonder, uh, Julia, have you been at home uh, and have you been seeking uh, God? Somebody told me uh, that if you seek, uh, you shall find 
mind. If you knock, the door shall be open. I don't know what you've been looking for, but I'm seeking after God. I don't have time this morning to give you the full backstory of this situation, but they were in a place quite how we are now. One commentary said, but it was like this, where there was no peace for those who went about their daily activities because the residents had many conflicts. In other words, they had some issues. They had sinned against God. Their culture were experiencing chaos and confusion. Don't it sound familiar? Uh, people storming the capital. Uh, racial injustice. COVID. It's a lot of chaos. But God, listen, didn't turn his back on them. But he also didn't stand by their side. Hear what I just said. I said God didn't turn his back on them. But he didn't stand by their side. Everybody is asking the question, where is God? He's where he has always been. And that's sitting on the right hand of God. Ah, Let me encourage you. I know everything that's going on. I know how you feel. Like God has turned his back on us but he didn't and he hasn't how do I know why he's still sustaining he's still providing he's still saving so as Arya encourages Asa and tells him but you take courage don't let your hands be weak for your work shall be rewarded uh, I feel God I'm trying to take my time this morning uh, this is where we will take our three points uh, he tells us uh, uh, that you have a reward uh, and he was telling him his reward uh, was not an earthly reward uh, it's not an earthly one but in heaven uh, he'll have a reward uh, but how many know uh, and how many have crazy faith enough to believe uh, that I can have heaven uh, right here on earth uh, I ain't got a way to cross over uh, but whatever it is I need uh, whatever it is I want to uh, all I gotta answer my father for it, and I can have heaven right here on earth. Uh, the first attribute we learn about Asa is bonus requires breaking. Yeah, that's what I said. Bonus requires breaking. Uh, everybody wants to get to the promised land. Uh, everybody wants to get to the miracle. Uh, everybody wants uh, their right now blessing. Uh, everybody wants uh, money. Uh, everybody wants house, cars, and clothes. I, I'm going to stop there. Most people want that blessing uh, and abundant life. Uh, and I'm not knocking you because I wanted to. Uh, but in order for us uh, to have the final things in life, uh, in order for us uh, to have a blessed life, uh, in order for us to build and have a certain lifestyle, it requires some boldness. It requires taking a risk. It requires courage. It requires some tenacity, but it also requires some breaking. There are some lessons in life uh, uh, that you won't learn uh, from going to college, uh, uh, having degrees, uh, being in church all your life. Uh, some comes from breaking. Uh, when things are built and then torn down, life has a way of doing that. Uh, has it happened to you? Seem like everything was all good. Uh, and all of a sudden, things uh, start falling apart. Marriage uh, was all good. Uh, and all of a sudden, Negro uh, start cheating. Uh, seem like everything uh, was all good. Uh, but then your job uh, start acting stupid. Uh, seem like everything uh, was all good. Uh, and then your health uh, want to act shady. Uh, uh, sometimes it happens uh, where everything seems to fall apart and it takes a while to get courage again. Huh? Yeah, if you be honest with yourself, it takes a while huh, to feel confident again. Huh? Maybe it was your relationship. Huh? Again, maybe it was your job. Huh? Maybe it was your no good family. Huh? Maybe it was one thing huh, after another huh, that broke you. Watch this huh, with prayer huh, and counseling. Hear what I just said. Huh? Prayer and counseling and time God built you back up again. Huh? Can you remember the time huh, when God built you back up again? I know you talk about me. 
and you remember my story when I was broken uh, but oh uh, I remember when God put me back together again uh, God was strengthening you uh, you didn't take an A uh, but you learned a lesson uh, and even though uh, you went through your breaking uh, you discovered a breakthrough you missed what I just said uh, I said even though you went through breaking uh, you discovered a breakthrough uh, I feel God right now so I'm going to just preach how I feel it uh, Deborah is sitting here with me uh, I remember when uh, she went through castle on her land I did not know that's my very good friend and sister uh, I remember when I didn't understand that people was asking me and thought I was lying but I did not know uh, what she was going through uh, until I got to her house one day uh, and I saw her with no hair before and I done seen her with braids weed and all type of stuff uh, but I had to watch her uh, go through that situation and that breaking and then one day I remember uh, she came through these doors uh, with a short haircut uh, all looking fine and everything uh, she went through her breaking but why she found her her breakthrough uh, and she never looked better uh, since the God showed you some things uh, about yourself when you went through your breaking uh, uh, that you didn't know was in you. Uh, God showed you uh, you in a different light uh, and now you're stronger. Uh, uh, guys, uh, you're brighter uh, and you're better. Uh, if you would never experience brokenness, uh, you wouldn't be bold. Uh, uh, breaking reaffirms uh, who you are, uh, but more importantly, who you are. Uh, Azaria uh, came to encourage uh, and reaffirm and let our son no, uh, your spirit is broken, uh, but you're not. Uh, you're not gonna stop building. Uh, if you're gonna be bold, uh, understand you first must be broken. Some of us uh, had to be broken uh, because we was built up by the wrong people. <laughs> and the wrong things and so God the creator of all things had to remind you who is the chief architect and the one who formed you and called you his own yeah. in the comments say don't lose your identity the second point is boldness requires building boldness requires building Isaiah uh, tells him to be encouraged or take courage. Don't let your hands be weak. Uh, I started the message off talking about New Year's resolutions uh, and vision parties. Uh, uh, we are still in the first month of this new year and I came to encourage you uh, that you don't have to be bold and build uh, I don't know what you are supposed to be building uh, maybe it's your brand uh, maybe it's your clothing company your e-commerce site uh, uh, building uh, you gotta keep on building maybe you're supposed to be building uh, for your company but God has laid some things uh, uh, to your hands uh, and you can't let your hands uh, get weak in 2020 God gave you a vision uh, and because of COVID uh, you were disobedient you were fearful and you stopped the process and you decided not to do it what God laid to your hands to do but I came to encourage you this morning and tell you to start building again to start prepping and preparing the groundbreaking God is giving you a second chance to get it done you got everything you need in your hand to carry out the vision God has already given you the provision because he is Jehovah Jireh the one that shall provide her. He said, I will supply her all your needs according to his riches and his glory. You don't need no bank. You don't need no stimulus. You don't need people. All you need is this promise you miss it. I said, you need a bank. You don't need a stimulus. You don't need people. All you need is a promise. In case you forgot, still in 2021, his promises are still. Yea, and amen. And his word will now return to him, Lord. Uh, can you do me a favor? I know I can't see you, but can you look at your hands physically and look and see what God has laid to your hand to do spiritually? Uh, God will not give you a vision without providing a way for it to come to pass. When I saw heard the word of the Lord, scripture says he started rebuilding and renewing the altar of God. Uh, what is it that you need to build? Building is an attribute of both 
wilderness uh, in this season. Uh, you're going to have to build uh, on your own. Uh, you can't wait for a team. Uh, you can't wait for another Facebook laugh uh, or a live prophet. Uh, you have to hear the voice of God uh, and get to building. Uh, you want your 2021 to be different? Uh, you're going to have to build and do it bold. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. Uh, do it with confidence. Uh, do it like it's already been done. Uh, do it with speed. See, the problem is uh, we take too much time uh, to do what God has told us to do. Uh, and when we decide to do it, uh, time has passed us. Uh, but God has given you the grace uh, to perform it in this season, uh, in this hour. Uh, what is the point uh, of being confident uh, and having boldness uh, if you ain't going to do nothing? Uh, I heard it saying like this uh, you better get off your do nothing uh, and, and do something uh, and make something happy uh, I'm sorry not sorry uh, I don't have time for Facebook rants uh, and TikTok videos uh, and dancing uh, I don't have time uh, for the latest trees and gossip uh, I have to build something uh, and it's gonna be great uh, I said I gotta build something uh, and it's gonna be great uh, let me help you uh, as I move to my final point uh, before you can build anything. God has to build you up first. <sighs> a bonus requires building. How does God build you up? He tells you that you are the righteousness of God. He tells you that you are the head and not the tail. He builds me up like that, y'all. You are above and not beneath. You are the lender and not the borrower. You can do all things through Christ who is your strength. And here's another one. Just because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Before you can build anything, God has to build you up. What's in your hand? Uh, be bold enough to build with it. I said, what's in your hand? Be bold enough to build with it. My third and final point, and I'm getting out of here. Uh, the last attribute of boldness is boldness requires God's blessing. Yeah, I hope you got excited because I certainly did. If you're going to be bold, you have to have the blessing of God. Some folk build and do anything with confidence because they don't have the blessing of God. Pastor told us last week that you can be bold with God's backing. And I just want to add to it this morning and tell you that also you have to have his blessing. Bishop Paul Morin, he put it this way. He said, Lord, whatever you are doing in this season, hey, God, don't do it. I feel it. I said, Lord, whatever you are I'm doing in the season. Lord, don't do it without me. Not sure who you're looking for and who's your motivation, but in this season, I'm looking for Jesus, the bright and morning star. Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Jesus, the rock in the weary land. Jesus, my friend, when I'm famous, somebody called him the door. I think you get the point. Too many people are hiding from God because uh, they stand of the fear and the wrath of God uh, and I can't speak for you. Uh, I ain't one of those people. Uh, I'm saying Lord here am I. Uh, Lord send me. Uh, if you send me I'll go. Uh, whatever you need God I'll do it. When you are bold, uh, you just don't uh, want to be a part of what God is doing. Hear me. Uh, you want God to bless the very thing uh, that you have in your hand. Hear what I just said. Uh, I said, when you are bold, uh, you just don't want to be a part of what God is doing. Uh, but when you get to God, uh, you want to bring him something uh, that he can lay his hands on. Uh, I don't know what it is uh, that you need God uh, to lay his hands, but you need to bring something to the table. In the verse, in the seventh verse, uh, we talked 
about the hand of Asa, which means God has laid something in our hands. But you got to have enough faith and creativity and come up with a plan, a vision for God to bless it. It doesn't work just in your head, but you got to do like the Bible. You got to have a manuscript. Something happens when you put it in black and white. You got to write it down so God can seal it. I keep getting overlooked. Some people feel that way. Don't nobody support me. They don't like my posts. Ain't nobody sharing my videos. Don't nobody support my small black business. Woe is me. Maybe, just maybe, what you're doing don't have the stamp of God's approval. Hear what I just said. I know, I know y'all gonna turn me off. It's okay. I said maybe, just maybe what you're doing uh, and maybe even what you're saying uh, don't have the stamp of God's approval. Uh, uh, that's the problem. Uh, we're seeking man's approval uh, and not God's. Uh, man will pump you up. Uh, they will push you and prime you uh, just to watch you fall uh, flat on your face. Yeah, I know you feel unappreciated. Uh, you feel slighted, uh, but maybe it's not time. Uh, it's time for you to go back to the drawing board uh, and ask God, uh, is this really what uh, I'm supposed to be doing her. Is this what I'm doing her? Is it worth your blessing? See, uh, you know you got something, Deborah. A uh, minister, Deborah, when God uh, don't mind putting his name on it, Ryan. Uh, see, the problem is uh, you've been doing it in your name, uh, but you got to do it in the name of Jesus. Uh, when you put Jesus' name in it, credit goes up. Uh, when you put Jesus' name in it, uh, something shifts and happens. Uh, you got to stop doing it uh, in your name. Uh, uh, there's a lot of people uh, who are bold and wrong. Hear what I just said. Uh, there's a lot of people uh, who are bold and wrong, and yeah, uh, they have have a following. Yeah, they got people on their timeline. Yeah, people are supporting them. But I heard uh, this the other day. Everybody ain't an influencer. And everybody don't have followers. Uh, the Bible says be careful of rules uh, and sheep clothes. Yeah, you think people are watching your life uh, because they put you. No, they are rules uh, and sheep clothes. Let me say this. Uh, you may not like what they're doing. Uh, you may not agree, uh, but maybe God uh, is blessing them uh, because they were bold enough to step up uh, and step out and do it. Sorry. You got to check yourself this season, sis, because uh, uh, you might be the hater in this season. Uh, uh, bro, you got to check yourself because in this season, uh, you might be the hater. Catch this. Uh, uh, stop being bitter uh, and do better. Hear what I just said. I said stop being bitter uh, and do better. Uh, we talk about whatever uh, and everybody else is doing uh, when we need to just do better. Uh, don't get mad who left, uh, who, who won't help, uh, who won't support you. Uh, do better. Uh, and, and when you do better, uh, do it boldly. In the name of Jesus. I gotta go. Uh, this is not the season uh, to just look busy, uh, but it's time to put your hands to work uh, and be about your father's business. Uh, and just in case you miss it, uh, what uh, what you're doing is still God's business. Listen, uh, you are an investment, uh, and God wants to see the return uh, of His investment. I hear what I just said. I say you are an investment, uh, and God wants to see the return of His investment. Yeah. Boldness requires God's blessing. I saw be rebuilt and renewed the altar. In, in a later verse, it says, uh, uh, when the people saw Jesus was with him, uh, uh, they gathered themselves. Uh, in other words, uh, they got on board. Uh, things shift uh, and things change. Uh, uh, miracles happen. Uh, uh, doors open. Uh, chains are broken. Uh, when people realize uh, Jesus is with you. Uh, listen, let me read some scriptures. Lions' mouths uh, were shut uh, when they realized that Jesus with, was with Daniel. Uh, a giant was slain because Jesus was with David. Uh, the three Hebrew boys, uh, they were promoted uh, because they realized Jesus was with them. Uh, think about your own life uh, and what has happened when somebody realized uh, that Jesus was with I know they told you no uh, at first, uh, but then something hit them uh, and they realized that you was with Jesus uh, and all of a sudden, some kind of way you got a yes. Uh, some things happened uh, when people realize uh, that you've been with Jesus. Uh, uh, your swag, uh, your posture, uh, your confidence in his difference when you are with Jesus. Our boldness requires God's blessing knowing that God 
is with you. A word says he's promised uh, never to leave me uh, or nor forsake me. Listen, uh, uh, don't you dare give in. Uh, uh, don't you dare give up. Uh, build, uh, rebuild, uh, save the course. Uh, God will send uh, who and what you need uh, to get the job done. Uh, when you have God's blessing, uh, it causes you to be bold. Uh, and even uh, if you have to start out on your own, uh, you will do what you have to do uh, because you realize it has to be done. Let me say it again. I say you will do uh, what you have to do because you realize uh, it has to be done. I saw uh, had attributes uh, of a bold man uh, because he experienced uh, brokenness. Uh, the people being chaotic and crazy. Uh, he was about to give up hope. Uh, but then God sent the word uh, to build him up again. Uh, and so he can rebuild the altar. Uh, uh, let me say this. Maybe uh, you need to go back to the altar. All right. We done took some things off the altar. And maybe that's what we got to do again. We got to put some things back on the altar. I know you're ready to go to divorce court. And you want to even do it now because you can do it virtually. But maybe you need to put that no good nigga. Maybe you need to put that cheating lady back on the altar. Maybe you need to put that wayward child back on the altar. Maybe you need to put your business back on the altar. Maybe you need to put yourself back on the altar. Put that nasty attitude back on the altar. Uh, put that negative disposition on the altar. Put whatever it is on back on the altar so God can work on it some more. I dare you to say, work on me, Jesus. Uh, build me up again. I want to be used by you. I, I want to be used by you. I'm God, I'm boldly standing here right now asking you to use me again. God, fill me up huh, with your power. God, fill me up huh, with your anointing so I can build again. You can't be better and just got to be better and do it boldly. God is requiring some things of us in spite of everything that's really going on. I'm really done. But you really know you're bold when in spite of everything that's going on with you, despite everything that's going on around you, when you still have enough courage, enough bravery to still do it in spite of. Right there in the comments, I want you to give God uh, in spite of praise. I want you to give God uh, in spite of no matter what I'm going through, no matter what I'm facing, I, I really was done. No matter what's against me, no matter who has left me, no matter who I felt was taken front of me, I have an in spite of, and I feel like running on to see what the end is going to be because I know the Bible says that greater is the end of a thing. I promise you, 2020 has been jacked up. 2021 didn't start off that great. The greater is the end of a thing. And I believe that God has commanded whatever the blessing is for you right now. But you don't have to be bold. You done went through your breaking period. It's time for you to start rebuilding. I said you went through your breaking period. It's time to start rebuilding. Pick up your bed and walk. Pick up your bed and walk. Listen, you may not even have enough strength to walk. You might have to do like me, or you might have to just limp. But whatever you do, I need you to move. You can't be standing no more. You can't stand in no more. There is grace on the other side. Thank you, Jesus. There's grace on the other side side but you got to be bold enough to take that first step boldness requires breaking it requires building and rebuilding but it also requires God's blessing what if you've been wasting so much energy and time on something that did not have God's blessing what if you've been building with the wrong people and the wrong team and that's the reason why God won't bless what it is that you're doing? Yeah. I'm not speaking for divorce, but maybe you've been rebuilding with the wrong person 
and the person really God has for you is waiting for you for God to bless and to give you grace. Whatever it is that God has put to your hand to do, you got to put your hands in the hand of the one that steers the water. Put your hand in his unchanging hand. Listen, I pray this word bless you. I pray it encourage you. I pray that you really just don't listen, but you be a hearer and a doer of these words. Because they're not our words, but they're the words given to us by God. To encourage you. To be bold. To keep pushing. If you got to do it by yourself, do it. One thing, and I'm really done. I feel like a Baptist preacher for real. One thing COVID has taught you. It taught you how to love yourself. It taught you how to deal with yourself. Because see, the outside world gives you an escape. When you don't have to deal with you. See, a lot of friendships and relationships, I don't know who I'm talking to, are broken because you felt like it was everybody else. But being by yourself, you realize that I'm an irritating person. Being by yourself, you realize that, you know, I ain't really that fun. But also being by yourself, you realize that I'm greater than what other people see. Listen, you be bold because you have God's backing and you have his blessing. We want to thank Minister Andrell Williams again for that word today. Pray that that message blessed you today the way that it blessed me. <laughs> May the love of God, the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, and sweet communion of Holy Spirit encourage you in the waiting, empower you until it happens and give you <laughs> the audacity to praise even when you haven't seen it, knowing that there is power in the yet. God has spoken. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. So let the church say Amen. God bless you. I love you. Have an amazing week. Hi, Smith Chapel. Here are your announcements for the week. Sunday mornings at 9.30 a.m. It's Sunday school. It's the opportunity for you to grow in God's word and to be engaged with others who want to grow in God's word together. We have a dynamic adult Sunday school teacher, Paula Turner, who would love to welcome you. So that happens every Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. on Zoom. Tuesday morning, seven o'clock. You know what time it is. It's praying time. It is our Tuesday morning power call. It's our opportunity to start our Tuesday mornings with power because we believe that there is power in prayer. So please join us and invite somebody who you know would be blessed by starting their day off in prayer. We are now on a summer hiatus from Bible study. I want to say thank you to all of you who have participated in Bible study with us over this last year and all of the amazing series that we've gone through together. We're going to take a little bit of time to allow you to spend some time with your family and your friends and to enjoy the summer, but don't get too comfortable because we'll be back together shortly. Now, what I want to invite you to at the same time that would have been Bible study, but I want to invite more than just our Bible Bible studiers, everyone is welcome. I am asking that everyone would join, but I'm particularly speaking out to our ministry heads, our officers, to please join us for a neighborhood canvas Tuesday evening, June 15th at 6 o'clock p.m. What an amazing opportunity that we now have to reconnect with our community, to let people know that we are here, that we care about them, and to invite them to come and worship with us. 
particularly inviting them to come to our Father's Day kickoff. We will have our Father's Day kickoff in the parking lot for our pull up and pray service. Now, here's just a reminder for everybody. We're getting ready to move into summer hours. Yes, we are. Our Sunday worship will now be at 10 a.m. So when you join us out on the parking lot, 10 a.m., hour of power that we can come and give the Lord some praise before we go into the rest of our summer day. June 13th is our church conference. Listen, I want to take the opportunity to connect with everyone, give everyone an update on where we are, and most importantly, where we're going. And so our official board meeting is for officers, but our church conference is for everyone. So get the word out that all members are invited. All right, those are your announcements for the week, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Have a great, safe, blessed holiday.